You know, most people think the hardest part about this job is getting up on stage, uh, being the center of attention, because most people hate being the center of attention, but I've never been one of those people. I even tried to sit on our Christmas tree when I was a kid, just because I thought I should be the star. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm just, not only do I love being the center of attention, it actually bothers me when I'm not. That's why the funerals have always been a little harder for me. <laughs> I'm not proud of that, folks. I'm just incredibly self-centered, so I just don't want to hear about somebody else for an hour. <laughs> Bill was a good man. Yeah, well, Bill didn't take off work today. I'm telling you, if I ever come home to an intervention, part of me would love the fact that I'm the reason everyone showed up. <laughs> and by the way, if you're one of those people who actually come to a comedy show and get offended, well, you're an idiot. I'm going to be honest with you. I, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> if someone says, no, it's not you, they're wrong. It is, trust me. Because you may as well be a vegan at a steakhouse. <laughs> Or a skinhead at the Apollo. <laughs> or a suicide bomber in an open field. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. That's my point. And I've had people complain to me. I, uh, one time a woman didn't like the fact that I was making fun of people who were getting older. And she said, you, you shouldn't make fun of old people. I'll bet you don't make fun of black people or gay people. And I said, well, actually I do. And they get old too. <laughs> You know, the weirdest complaint I ever got was surreal because the woman was smiling when she came up to me. She said, uh, you know, judgment day is kind of... <laughs> I said, well, I'm married, so I think I'll be ready. <laughs> she didn't appreciate that. And she said, you know, I have a personal relationship with Jesus. I said, how old are you? <laughs> And I knew what was coming next. Have you been saved? I said, well, I'm uh, still stuck talking to you. <laughs> you ever notice when people start to lecture you about religion, the first thing that always pops into your head is, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know enough about religion to make fun of it, to be honest with you. Uh, well, I was raised Crystal Methodist. <laughs> Anything I did learn was long ago. You know, one of the biggest mistakes you make as a comedian is assuming that everyone knows you're a comedian. And it's happened to me so many times, especially when I was starting out. I was, I was at a hotel and I, I'd done a corporate show at a hotel, standing in line next to a woman. Apparently this woman couldn't wait to get to the front and complain. So she turned around and started complaining to me, so I assumed she saw my show. And she, It was during the holidays, and she said, you know, I'm Jewish, and I hate the fact they put a Christmas tree in the middle of the hotel, and they put our menorah here at the front desk. <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I'm pretty sure the menorah is at the front desk, so you could see it when you're in line to complain. <laughs> and I told that story to a friend of mine a few months after it happened. This guy's from uh, Trinidad, Tobago. His name's Nazir. Yeah, I, I told him the story what happened. He goes, oh, I love them Jewish women, them Jewish women. I love them Jewish They don't love me. I said, well, maybe it's because your first name has the word Nazi in it. I said, well, why don't you change your name to Carl, spell with three Ks. Yeah, clap with you. I met my wife when I was working on a cruise ship, and a lot of people think if you're working on a cruise ship as an entertainer, you're not very good. Uh, but the advantage is you don't have to worry about being discovered. <laughs> we, we did meet when I was working on a cruise ship. Uh, she was a pirate. And uh, that was a four-day Somalia run. I, actually, I had actually proposed to another woman right before I met my wife, but I got dumped. I was dating a beautiful dark-skinned woman from Zimbabwe, and I even proposed to this woman, and she said... <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> you gotta move on. <laughs> you know. You know. Woman says. <laughs> yeah, I learned very early. Means. <laughs> You know, whenever I hear the expression, no means no, I always feel bad for people who are dyslexic. Because, well, for them it's on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't do very well in school. Um, I, had that, uh, I had that learning disorder where you don't care. It's a nasty disorder, folks. It, it affects millions of people all over the world. And it, uh, it attacks your ability to make more than 30 grand. And you gotta jump on it early, otherwise you can spend years at a two-year school. I went to a two-year school. I didn't even make it. I dropped out after one year. It's kind of like quitting t-ball, because you think the ball's coming at you too fast. It wasn't even a good school. It, our, our slogan was the word hope with a line through it. <laughs> we just had a reunion two years ago at the mall because that's where most of the alumni work. <laughs> yeah, my wife went to school for uh, industrial psychology, workplace psychology, or HR, even though I think she should have gone for you know, archaeology. Well, like a lot of women, she loves to dig up crap from the past. <laughs> Oh, come on, who needs, a, who needs a hard drive when you have a wife? <laughs> I think another thing that's hard about my job is not acting like this when I get home. It's hard because I, you know, I don't go home and start making balloon animals. <laughs> I, this is the same thing. That's why when people meet my wife, they'll say, God, it must be so much fun being married to a comedian. <laughs> She'll go, yeah, it's, it's great. All we do is laugh. <laughs> it's just the way my brain thinks. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's how it sounds. For example, if my wife would say something like, Oh, I wish I could be more spontaneous. I would say, Well, make me a sandwich out of nowhere. <laughs> I, know, I know, it's... <laughs> I'm an unfit mother. Oh, I think you look fine. <laughs> My wife isn't unfit at all, by the way. Uh, in fact, she only gained 25 pounds with her first daughter. But we adopted. <laughs> yeah, one night my wife was going on and on. She kept saying, you know, I really, I really wish we had cathedral ceilings. And I said, honey, why don't you take the legs off the furniture? I can't even watch a movie without being obnoxious. We, we tried to watch a movie about a married couple that got divorced and then the husband lost his mind. Started stalking his ex-wife. My wife was very playful. She goes, you wouldn't stalk me if we ever split up, would you? I said, honey, I don't pay attention to you now. <laughs> Makes you think I'm gonna sit in the bushes. If we break up, I mean, yeah, you're right in front of me and I'm losing focus. <laughs> But I did try to stalk an ex-girlfriend when I was in college. But I was so bored, I knocked on her door. And I said, listen, I'm going to take off. <laughs> I can tell you, my sense of humor is the leading cause of most of our arguments. One time we had an argument because of the word bagpipes. Literally. So we have a bag of ice. It's in the freezer. One night I said, honey, can you get the bag of ice? She thought I said bagpipes. And boy, that's all it took. <laughs> Did you say get the bagpipes? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I said. Get the bagpipes you've never seen me play. <laughs> Wait, why don't you grab my kilt while you're at it? Gonna... Check on our sheep after dinner. <laughs> you're such an idiot. <laughs> One night my wife said, you ever notice terrorists are always men? I said, well, actually, a lot of women are terrorists. They just never claim responsibility. <laughs> uh, I knew that reaction was coming. I knew that reaction was coming. So I want to see a, a show of hands from the ladies. And, and please let me finish. 
<laughs> How many women here have been wrong? Exactly. All right. <laughs> My wife, oh God, my wife hates being wrong. My wife would rather have sex with me than admit she was wrong. Think about that. My wife's never wrong. That's why her, her nickname is the customer. <laughs> After the election last year, my wife said, you know, someday we're going to elect a woman president. And when we do, we're not going to go to war. He said, honey, we'll still go to war. It's just the other country will have no idea what it did wrong. <laughs> He's like, why are you doing this? What have we done to you? Why are you so angry? <laughs> well, if you don't know what you did... <laughs> I'm tell you. My wife is constantly rolling her eyes at me. One time, I, I thought she was having a seizure. <laughs> My wife was born in Hong Kong. Uh, she was, uh, but she grew up. Uh, she grew up. Uh, she, she basically grew up in the states. She, was, she uh, spent most of her life here in the states. So she's very westernized. In fact, she's a racist. So <laughs> almost like she was born here. <laughs> We did go to Hong Kong for our honeymoon, which I, I felt like, the only thing I didn't like was the flight. It was 15 hours, uh, and I was in a middle seat next to a woman with a baby that wasn't happy. Yeah, well, my wife and kid. Uh, that's what made switching my seat so awkward. I mean, come on, who wants to sit next to that one? 15 hours. Babies are one thing, but boy, you've got a colicky wife. <laughs> and I've noticed that when you're on a plane, if you're in the emergency row, I, I really think you should be able to look around at the people you might be helping before you say you agree to help out. I'm sorry, I just think we can all agree that some people aren't worth saving. <laughs> I also think that people that work airport security should look better when you consider all the health and beauty products they keep taking away. <laughs> hey, before you throw my aftershave in the garbage, why don't you slap some on yourself, lady? <laughs> a couple years ago, I was going, I, I had a corkscrew in my carry-on. It was a wedding gift. I put it in my carry-on. I forgot it was there, and the guy took it. And first of all, he looked at me like he caught me. As if the corkscrew would be my weapon of choice if I wanted to bring a plane down. And then at one point he actually said, well, what is this for? So at that point I knew he was going to take the corkscrew, so I said, uh, I'm constipated. I love my wife's maiden name. It's very interesting because it's spelled C H U, but it's pronounced malcontent. <laughs> I'd never been to Hong Kong. It was I fell in love with the city and the people. Uh, of course, I kept hugging the wrong woman. <laughs> Nobody else thinks the Chinese look a little similar. <laughs> You, you try to pick out your in-laws at a dim sum restaurant. Let's we'll see how long it takes you. Now, by the way, I do know that joke's a little racist. But, well, I'm white. That's what we do. I'm actually the opposite of a racist. Uh, what I mean is I, I hate people like me. But I'll tell you the truth, that if you're white, people assume you're racist all the time. In a weird way, it's the, it's the cross we bear when we're not lighting it on fire.
<laughs> Our first date didn't go well because my wife didn't like the fact that I asked her if she was a doctor. And thought that was inappropriate, thought I was basing it a stereotypical you know, rejection. And she said, you're not asking uh, because I'm Chinese, are you? I said, no, you're wearing a surgical mask. <laughs> I did ask about the Chinese Zodiac, I was just curious, and I found out I was born in the year of the horse's ass. <laughs> I know race is a tough subject, it's a brutal subject, I, I, I can't imagine having millions of people hate me who I've never even met before. Uh, but I talk about it because it's real. Uh, I also talk about it because I have two children, uh, they're biracial, so I'm going to, you know, have to, you know, explain it to them in a couple of years. And I don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to... You know, set those little hybrids down. <laughs> you know, listen up, Fusion, Labrador. Um, you little white and yellow whippersnapper. Uh, half Chinese and half master race. So, uh, hang in there, Twinkies. <laughs> Now, come here and give Daddy round eye up. <laughs> well, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do because white folks, uh, white folks don't have to explain racism to their kids, and if we do, it's more like, oh, you're going to love it. <laughs> Once in a while, my wife will say something like, "Oh God, you know, you're so lucky you're white," and I'll say, uh, "I know." <laughs> I'm like, Honey, I'm white, straight, and male. Winner. I'm a human bingo, for God's sake. I'm a golden Wonka ticket incarnate. Now get on my back and start walking. Well, I don't feel bad. The first time my wife heard that joke, she told me I should think about teaching yoga or flexibility because she said she never saw a guy who could put his foot in his mouth while he had his head up his ass. <laughs> And I'll be honest with you, I don't care about stuff like that. Gender, sexuality, race, doesn't bother me. I don't think I, I think it's meaningless. I don't take pride in things I have nothing to do with. And I, and I to be honest, I, I never even think about my wife as I, wife and I any differently as, as far as other couples. The only time I realized we were a little different was when I realized we're not going to start to look like each other. <laughs> you spend a long time with somebody, something happens, osmosis kicks in, and you start to look like the same person. The only time it happens for us is when I'm tired and she's surprised. <laughs> We're actually a good fit. My wife has the masters in HR and people like me are the reason I had to create the HR department. <laughs> if you think about it, comedians get paid for the same reason most people get fired. <laughs> but I did get fired. I did, to be honest with you. I, uh, I worked, I got fired three years ago and I, uh, I get fired uh, by a cruise line that rhymes with Royal Caribbean. <laughs> and I got fired because a passenger was offended by one of my jokes, and I told him to make love alone. <laughs> yeah, well, now in my defense, the guy, the guy seemed like a real do-it-yourselfer. So we actually have two daughters right now. We also have a, a little boy doing about six weeks. We're excited about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, um, we were gonna stop. We were gonna stop at uh, one, but we, uh, well, we both wanted a favorite. <laughs> and we decided on the name. We're gonna go with Levon. It's an Elton John song. It's my favorite. Elton. You know the song? It's a great song, Levon. My, my best friend never heard of it. And I, I said, hey, we're going with Levon. He goes, is he going to be black? <laughs> he said, well, you know, I travel a lot. <laughs> we were, no, we were, we're very lucky. We were, we, were, we were lucky to get pregnant, to be honest with you. Wasn't medical, we're just not very active. <laughs> like when my wife said she wanted to have a baby, I said, honey, that's gonna involve sex with me. She said, no, I looked into a vitro. I think I found a way around it. 
And a few years ago, we stayed at a really nice hotel, and uh, my wife had the Do Not Disturb card shoved in her vagina. <laughs> I was so mad I flipped it over and told her to clean it. <laughs> I should tell you that I'm not being fair or completely honest, because I'm, I'm 47, and so I'm not exactly chasing my wife around the house with my pants around my ankles anymore. In fact, you know, so the only thing I fantasize about at this point is just getting hard. <laughs> I, I, I used to fantasize about being with two women, but the closest I'll get to that now is my wife and I actually do have sex, and she has a mood swing. <laughs> Ooh, that feels good. Ah! <laughs> oh, well, who's your friend? 